my name is Archbishop Martin Kivuva Musonde. I'm the Archbishop of Archdiocese Mombasa. And the Archdiocese Mombasa is in the coastal part of our country, Kenya. Today, and I believe, the day of Pentecost, which is a Sunday, we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. To understand the coming of the Holy Spirit in the context of our world today, and at the same time to appreciate his presence among us and in the church, we must begin with the man called God himself, God the Father. The Bible tells us about God the Creator. And a God the Creator comes in, in the world to put order and organize us in a manner that he can continue to appreciate and we also can continue to appreciate his fatherhood and his journey with mankind. He chooses a, can, uh, a nation called the Sons of Israel There's, as, a, as the, the working community with him. He journeys with him and there we are because when we fell as human beings became sinners, he promised he's going to give us another one to give us another chance to walk with him. When Christ came on earth, born, born in Christmas day, we, or the day we celebrate his birth, he grew up among his people, the Jews in Israel and most of the adjoining lands. When he came, time came, he became an adult and he took on the job, the work of his father. And in the last readings, after Easter, we had been listening to the stories of Jesus talking about his father, who is an image of. He says, um, look at me, I look like the father, don't I? And then father and I are one. And he continued to speak about his father and his last days where we ended up uh, talking about Christ going up to heaven. He came on board to speak and share with us the advocate, the one who will come to share with us whatever happens, whatever he taught. He says, when the advocate comes, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will come to reveal all that I told you, all that I have been, I've been doing. He will reveal everything. And he reminds his disciples who he had chosen that Christ, who is the, the Son of the Father, and from the Son and the Father proceeds the Holy Spirit. So Ascension Day, when we had Christ going up to heaven and the people of uh, the disciples sitting and walking and riding, coming with him the mount, so to say, it hit to on us that he's going to the Father. And he says, I'll be with you always until the end of time. Remember now, the Holy Spirit is celebrated in the church and in the Acts of the Apostles that book talks about the D-Day when this happened. He said after uh, uh, 50 days, after Pentecost, Pentecost is the word is 50. Remember Christ has, has been um, killed by those adversaries but within his death later on three days later he's up, he's awake, he's strong, is walking with his people again, appearing in different ways, and now the disciples were extremely afraid, very, very, very afraid, scared stiff. So they went and hid, they went and literally hid in a, in a room upstairs, like we all do when we are really scared. You young fellows, or memed adult, whoever it is, if you are totally scared, you go and hide. They gathered together, the eleven, with Mary among them. They gathered there at that upper room. Some of you who have gone to Israel have been shown possibly the place that is said they went, the upper room. This upper room, they were there, sitting, waiting, praying, walking out to buy food and back. They literally couldn't go out. They were really scared. Come the day, Pentecost, and we are told in Acts of the Apostles, there came a thunder like 
tan that they have never had before. And before them came in um, luminance like fire or over everyone. And this luminance of everyone and put them all completely down to a new spirit of energy they never had before. All their fear went away. All their fear disappeared. And in fact, they just opened the doors and went out to the main town, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the main city, is a place where everybody went to big celebration about uh, being uh, delivered from the hands of Egyptians and so on. And those afraid again, who are afraid, all the fear goes. And who picks up the microphone if there was one? Who picks up the speech if there was one? Who takes up the mantle of the leadership? Peter. Peter speaks up and stands up. Sons and sons and daughters of Israel, listen to me. We who you see us speak now are speaking from an experience we have never had before. We are witnesses, they say. They are witnesses of none other but what happened to Christ. And that's what they were told to be. They were witnesses. They walked with him. They ate with him. They saw him die. They saw him go up. And now they are there. They are the witnesses that Christ is alive among them. And what has happened to them, he says, is nothing other but his spirit of, um, let me say, his spirit of God the Father and the Son that proceeds from the Father. The Holy Spirit is the one that has given them this courage to stand up and talk. What are we learning from this? We are learning that moments and times again, we can be knocked off our feet by fear, by scare, by whatever. Could be poverty, could be disease, like we are all going through now, all of us, the countrywide and everywhere. Every, the whole world is experiencing a moment of fear in, engraved in us or in our people by the disease of Corona. So from this Sunday, I think Christ is telling us, yes, you are so scared, but I can empower you with a new spirit. And we know and we believe that through this experience we are going through, my dear brothers and sisters, we are going to emerge as powerful as ever before never before in the sense of our faith enlivened or renewed or strengthened by this unique power is like a charge on a dead battery that you bring this battery again that could not charge the car that could not light the, the house and what happens the new light comes on so my dear brothers and sisters you're listening to me i believe and i strongly believe God gave us a moment to come out of all this and is giving us a moment to know we are not alone. He still continues to remind, I'll be with you until all time, until the end of time. I'll be with you, walking with you. And he's walking with nations, he's walking with the families, he's walking with you young people, he's walking with you old people, he's walking, he's journeying with you at the hospital bed, at the family level, it's frustrating, yes, we are not going to school, but this is a moment again maybe to re-energize ourselves. So when that time comes, we go out like the disciples. <laughs>
Spirit in the church uh, by name famously known Pentecost. Pente is a, a Greek name that talks about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And uh, the church teaches us to understand who is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a third person in the Blessed Trinity. And we get this in the scripture <clears throat> that we have God the Father, we've God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And of God the Holy Spirit, as Christ promised his apostles, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth. It is the Paraclete. It is that inspiring uh, force in our hearts, in our lives, to be able to recognize how God operates in his three persons. And so the coming of the Holy Spirit in the church imparts graces, a graces of love, graces of um, witnessing a graces of living a holy life. That's why Christ told his apostles in John chapter 15 verse 26 that when the Holy Spirit will come, he will be the paraclete, 
he will be the consoler, he will be the advocate, he will be the counselor. And therefore, the Holy Spirit will speak on behalf of God the Father and God the Son, will teach us the truth of what Christ came to bear on the world on behalf of the Father. And so, when we talk of the Holy Spirit, dear friends in Christ, we must be able to distinguish that there are three persons in the Holy Trinity and each of them is distinct. So the Holy Spirit is distinct in his and her own way of working. And therefore, his work is to renew the face of the church, is to renew our relationship with God, is to renew our relationship with uh, Christ. And so, we must allow the Holy Spirit to dwell in our hearts as we read the Bible in Galatians chapter 4, verse 6. So, you get to understand that for sure, the Holy Spirit dwelling in our hearts will move us closer to eternal life in union uh, with Christ and for Christ uh, where we are also sanctified in our hearts. So, the Holy Spirit essentially is good to understand her mission. What is the mission of the Holy Spirit in the church? It is the continuity of God's work, what we call a plan of salvation. So the Holy Spirit enhances that work of salvation and where Christ left his work in the church, that work must be continued by the Holy Spirit. And therefore, we see the Holy Spirit in scriptures. We see the Holy Spirit in the works of the church. We see the Holy Spirit in the teachings of the church, the magisterium. We see the Holy Spirit in proclamation, witnessing, and evangelization. We see the work of the Holy Spirit as revealed by the church fathers to bring to us the reality of the mystical body of Christ. So, vivifying that the presence of Christ, the presence of God the Father, the presence of the church is vividly witnessed through the Holy Spirit.
Mwashie na nuru wa kilini mwetu Kutu jaze kwa wendo na hiyo miyoyo yetu Jojo jo kwetu nuwe mokoriji Tufundishe yo mikuni of the church does wonderful works in life of us and the life of the church and therefore we are called to imitate the Holy Spirit so that as much as we are left in this world we are not of this world it is the Holy Spirit that elevates us to the realities of God to the realities of holiness to the realities of of imparting peace and love and unity in the world. It is the Holy Spirit that sanctifies the work of the faithful. We as Christians all over, from the youngest to the oldest, we must realize that the sanctification is not a work of your efforts. It is not a work of your intelligence. It is not a work of money of or anything, but it is the work of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, as the Holy Spirit sanctifies us, He brings our souls closer to God, to the holiness of God. He brings us closer to an encountering Christ Himself in His ways of saving the world, in His miracles, in His uh, gospel of salvation, and in his way where he tells us he is the way, the truth, and the life. This we can only get to know by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And so, together as Christians in the church, from family, small Christian communities, to different groups in the churches, to the universal church, we are able to sound one voice, Abba, Father. That is by the grace of of the Holy Spirit. Now, friends, we need also to ask ourselves, in this work of the mission, that is of the Holy Spirit, that our life as Christians, it is by the promptness of the Holy Spirit that brings us to the sacraments. The sacrament of baptism, the sacrament of confirmation, the sacrament of confession or penance, the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist and other sacraments, it is by the grace of the Holy Spirit that touches each and every one of us in our lives that we get to be converted in order to come closer to God through the sacraments. And therefore, the Holy Spirit plays a very key role in communicating to each and every member of the church, that is, the members of the body of Christ, on how to discern the graces of God through the lives of sacraments. And especially this time that all of us, <clears throat> we are closed from going to the churches, we must allow the Holy Spirit to accompany us. As we read in the Bible, John chapter 14, verse 25. The work of the Holy Spirit in reminding us, all of us as Christians, how to get Christ in his revealed way and more so in the Holy Eucharist. So the Spirit, dear friends, <coughs> builds, animates, sanctifies the church. Hence, sanctifies you, as an individual, because you are a member of the church. Sanctifies your family, 
because that family is a member of the church sanctifies the small Christian communities and our different groups of CWA, CMA, uh, C, uh, the PMC, and all those different groups, the Holy Spirit sanctifies us because we are members of this church. And therefore, once we are sanctified, <clears throat> we sanctify the church. And therefore, friends, the Holy Spirit restores to us who are baptized the divine likeness of God. The Holy Spirit inspires us to love the Holy Trinity. Hence, improves us as we walk through the truths. In the way of Christ, we come to be able respectively to contribute positively in the growth of the church. As we all know from Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are quite many and much of what they do, they elevate our lives to the level of God-like uh, people in his life. And therefore, the fruits of the Holy Spirit prompts us to embrace the goodness of God. Dear friends, the revelation that we have in the church and all works that are being done in the church is by the Holy Spirit. So to live to the mystical realities of salvation, as we read in Romans chapter 16, verse 25 to 27, is that all men and women are in communion. How great should we find ourselves in communion with one another, in communion with the church, in communion with the Holy Trinity? Because it is in that communion that we become vessels of love, that we become vessels of peace, that we become vessels of God's goodness in the society where we live. It is that revelation that is brought to us by the graces of the Holy Spirit is that we are able to create a continuity of communioniness that is shared in the Holy Trinity of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Oh, my God. 
come to the celebration of Pentecost that this year 2020 during the COVID-19 the doors of the church are closed but the doors of our hearts and our lives to receive Christ Jesus are not closed. So we have to open our hearts to receive Christ Jesus. And for us to be able to do this, it is by the gift of the Holy Spirit. Allow me to share with you, just to understand, then what is the gift? The gifts of the Holy Spirit are a blessing given to our souls and they enhance the natural powers that are in our souls to possess the holiness of God and talk to our innermost being in relationship with God. And so these gifts are like God's images, spiritual images, spiritual principles in our lives. And so God, the Holy Spirit, is always working in us by prompting us to lead us to a greater purity, greater love, a greater holiness. And this life of purity, love and holiness brings us to what we call uh, virtues, theological virtues that are faith, hope, and charity. And so this is just to understand what the gifts are. Now, secondly, to understand the gifts of the Holy Spirit is to realize that they are imparted in us as graces that are lasting in our life, that bring us to habitual disposition in response to God's call in our lives. So then, about the Holy Spirit that we shall celebrate this coming Sunday is to understand that there are seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, which are, as we read in the um, first letter of Corinthians chapter 12, is the gift of wisdom, gift of understanding, gift of counsel, gift of fortitude, gift of knowledge, gift of piety, and the gift of fear of the Lord. As this spoken in the scriptures and taught by the Holy Mother Church. But it's also good to recognize that away from the gifts, we have the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And which are these fruits of the Holy Spirit? Dear friends, these fruits of the Holy Spirit, you read them in Galatians chapter 5, verse 20 to 23, where we talk of the gift of love, the gift of understanding, the gift of charity, the gift of peace, the gift of many other gifts that we are given as we are, as you read the scripture, the way I have said. So then, dear friends, when we want to talk about the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, it's very clear, as I have said. So when we talk of the gift of fear of the Lord, what does that mean? It is to revere the Lord. It is to give God his respect. It is to know that it is only one God that you must worship, you must adore, and you must glorify. No other gods must be worshipped. So that is what we learn from the gift of the fear of the Lord. The gift of uh, knowledge is about unknowing God. And to know God is to know his nature and to know his ways of saving you, of saving mankind in the world. The gift of understanding brings us to the reality of getting to understand the salvific plan 
of mankind where men and women are included. And therefore, once you understand God's plan of salvation, then you must understand why Christ came and for what purpose Christ suffered and for what purpose Christ resurrected and ascended and for what purpose that the Father through the Son the Holy Spirit came to the apostles hence to the church. So the gift of fortitude is to be zealous, to stand firm and defend your faith. The gift of courage is to have the very inner driving force that will help you to go and witness as the apostles witnessed from Jerusalem to Samaria to Judea and hence to the world, to the world as you read in uh, Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verse 8 where Jesus commanded his apostles go out to the whole world and in Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 to 20 go out to the whole world and witness and teach and show that the world knows me. So it is by the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So the gift of piety, this is a gift that helps us to demonstrate our kind honor of God and devotion to God and the realities of holiness that brings us to salvation.
Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and we shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, Grant that by the same Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy your gifts of consolation through Christ our Lord. And so with this prayer, we ought to know that the work of the Holy Spirit is to renew the face of our hearts, is to renew the face of our lives, is to renew the face of our families, which are small church, 
is to renew the face of the universal church. And therefore, we must allow the Holy Spirit to give each and every one of us that grace of renewal of heart and mind and of life. We must allow the Holy Spirit to teach us so that we may understand, that we may know, that we may wisely do things that the Lord wants of us, that we may speak in spirit, a spirit of truth, that in so doing, we may give also a new life to the church, beginning from our families. And in so doing, dear friends, we have to realize that the work of the Holy Spirit in renewing the face of the earth is to renew human beings, is to renew our attitudes, and so we must walk in the Spirit. We must walk in the spirit. Walk, 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 walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit of the Lord. The Holy Spirit comes to renew our ministry. The ministry of Christ as he mandated us to go out and baptize. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It is by the grace of the Holy Spirit that we baptize. Just like when you read the, the Acts of the Apostles in uh, chapter 16 and the chapter 19, the Holy Spirit, those who were baptized and did not receive the Holy Spirit, the apostles imposed position in their hands on them so that they could receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is manifested in us as the fire that burns all evils in our life but also lights the fire of our faith. The Holy Spirit in baptism anoints us with the oils that are of holiness of God himself so that in our life, once anointed, we take the position, positions of Christ's threefold ministries. The ministry of prophesying, the ministry of priesthood, and the ministry of kingship. Where our entire work and the mission of the church is done through those threefold ministries. It is by the work of the Holy Spirit and in that renewal manner of our lives. Secondly, the Holy Spirit anointing us gives us a proper position and the rank of sharing with God his godliness. And therefore, that's why he gave us the spirits that will never die. It is this spirit of God that gives us life.
So the Holy Spirit then, dear friends, calls you to participate in the life of the church. So the life of the sacraments, the life of the prayer, and the life of the liturgy, especially in the Holy Eucharist. Thirdly, the Holy Spirit in building the church calls you to offer yourself in charity. Charity to support the church, to support the ministers in all ways with your gifts, whether money or materials or your cars or your whatever that you have. Look to it that you are able to contribute positively and to the growth of the church for the evangelization. And that evangelization brings salvation to the people of God. And so you assist the ministers to reach out to the marginalized, to the peripheries, to be able to evangelize, to be able to build the churches, to be able to extend their good work to the poor, to the needy, to the marginalized, and all those that we are talking about. Lastly, dear friends, to discern the gifts of the Holy Spirit calls each and every one of you to listen. You must develop the skill of listening. Listening to what God wants of you. Listening to what God will want you to do. Listening to the other. Listening to what the church teaches. Listening to many other things that are within the church. It is in listening, dear friends, that we are able to speak the message of Christ because you've discerned, you've learned to be silent, and the Holy Spirit works in you when you are silent. The Holy Spirit is not a spirit of panic, of noise making, of shouting, even when he we know that the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, when the disciples received the gifts of the Holy Spirit, they spoke in tongues. And somebody will challenge you to ask, but why don't you speak in tongues if you have the gifts of the Holy Spirit? For sure, look at the way the Catholic Church is structured. It is a universal church that stretches from your family to the families of all hemispheres. So the languages the Chinese speak, people in Asia, people in South America, people in Europe, people in Central America, people in Africa, they speak in their own languages and therefore you also speak them because you are a member of the church. That is discerning those gifts of the Holy Spirit by listening. It is not by shouting. It is not by speaking in languages that people don't understand, even your mother or your father cannot be able to understand. No! the gifts of the Holy Spirit to be able to speak the language that must, you must speak a language that people hear. And that is why in the liturgy that we celebrate, we celebrate it in all different languages in the world. Look at how wonderful the Holy Spirit inspires each and every one of us to be able to speak in our own language, a language that is heard and known by your people so that they are able receive the message of salvation. Dear friends, the power of the Holy Spirit is to empower the church so that we are able essentially to proclaim, to witness and evangelize. God bless you. Happy Feast of Pentecost. Oh, 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 oh,
the work of your hands, all of you nurses, doctors, and all those who are doing the very difficult work to care for the sick while they are also somehow afraid and scared, perhaps may he energize you may he energize you priests, fathers sisters, who are listening to me that we were knocked down all of a sudden, we had a crowd all of us, there's no crowd, all of a sudden we had the people in our churches, no churches and even as we open we are cautiously opening our churches and places of worship in, in a kind of a, uh, being careful, being alert, at the same time being confident. Pray that God gives us the energy and spirit of um, newness as he renewed the church. It is from Pentecost the first disciples got their first baptism. They asked, what should we do then? And they were told, repent and believe in the gospel. They were baptized. And they were sent out as well as the, as the disciples were sent out. Go out to the whole world and bring the good news. Let's go out in our world. And today, thanks be to God, you can watch me. You can listen to me. We can hear each other through all these social media platforms. There are many. And I know is the reason God gave us that command. Go out to the whole world whole world is starting from where you are to the rest of the world. Starting from Galilee, he told them, to the rest of the world, to the rest of the world, from Jerusalem to Galilee and elsewhere. And open the doors, as we heard the other day, he opened the doors of all those who are not necessarily Catholics or Christians. Uh, the other day we had a wonderful experience, I continue to remind myself, when the churches were not able to accommodate everybody, and our brothers, the Muslims, asked the Christians in, in, in Germany, in one of the churches, and they were given an opportunity to, to use their facility. Let's use God's facilities we have in the world. The wealth we have, for all those you know, is there to be shared. At the level of leadership, what you're given is to be shared. The leadership, the skills, the gifts is to be shared. And our world will be better if we only became generous. Remember, when Peter was asked by, by Jesus, 
Can I use your boat? And what did Jesus want the boat for? He wanted the boat to preach to the people at the shore. And Peter had spent all night, all night, the same boat, but he didn't catch anything. He reminds us when Christ uses us at his own command, we have lots of fruit, we have lots of harvest, we have lots of uh, fish on our boat. So, this time, my dear brother and sister, ask Jesus to use your boat for his glory. God bless you. Happy Feast Day, Pentecost. Mbarikiwe nyote mnaonisikiliza popote ulipo. Mungu atupe sikuku njema ya kusherekea uh, Roho Mtakatifu, ujio wa Roho Mtakatifu miongoni mwa mitume wake. Asanteni na Mungu awabariki.
Maisha yangu mimi nimeupokea mwili na yona mwenyezi Chakula kitulizo cha roho yangu Asante Yesu mwana Yesu bwana wakunilisha mwili wako Asante baba Asante Yesu mwana Yesu bwana wakunilisha mwili wako Asante baba
of people or a choir willing to do an audio and video production worry no more since investor media production is all here for you welcome as we do very great jobs in full hd and 4k videos we also do digital audio recording karibuni sana opendwa msibaki nyumu tuende kazi St. Sylvester Media Production, The Catholic Choice Studio, Hatubati Shikazi. <laughs> 